Welcome to the Life Moves Podcast, a podcast about dance in this crazy, ever-changing world. Thank you for listening to or watching this episode. We hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Breakout Studios Life Move Podcast. We are discussing today being an artist, being a dancer, being a teacher, a creative, a self-employed person in the COVID-19 age. So what does that mean? How are we changing? How are we developing our skills to be in this new world? Um, I'm going to be talking with two really incredible artists today. Um, And the first one, full disclosure, is a breakout faculty member, um, Alana Jonas. She's incredible. I've known her for a number of years. We are so, so thankful to have her on our faculty. She's been included in our live classes. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to gallery view here to bring her on. How are you doing, Alana? I'm doing pretty well, Todd. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Thank you for joining me. I think this is a really important discussion we're about to have because I think a lot of creatives, um, especially dancers, are trying to rethink how they are sort of flowing through life right now and everything from finances to um, daily schedules and and so on and so forth. So before we get into the thick of that, I just wanted to quickly give our audience a little background on yourself. So when um, did you start dancing? Oh, I started dancing when I was four years old, and I've been doing it since, so my whole life, really. Awesome. And whereabouts were you when, when you were starting to do that? Um, I started, I grew up in Southern California, so I began at the Academy of Dance in Santa Ana um, in Orange County area, and I trained there throughout my entire childhood until I attended uh, the University of Arizona for my undergrad. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And after that undergrad, you did go on to dance professionally in companies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Right after undergrad, I moved to San Diego to dance with the California Ballet Company, um, which I did for three years and then um, went up to San Francisco and danced with a couple of different companies up there. Um, Menlo Ballet, Company C, Contemporary Ballet. And then I did some work with the uh, dancing with the San Francisco Opera. Um, So and a couple of little projects as well. That's awesome. And then back to U of A for your master's. Mm hmm. Yep, and I just finished, completed my first year, so I have one more to go. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that, yeah. that's a whole other discussion is how that's all happening. With yeah. um, We actually have another, I have another podcast uh, video cap set up with someone that graduated um, and how he's kind of dealing with not having a graduation and what to do, where to go, and uh, uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, how are you? Um, how are you doing in general before we get into dance? How are things? Um, I'll say I'm doing pretty well. I think it's just kind of up and down as it seems to be for everybody. Some days it's like, I got this and I'm doing it and I'm just, I'm still working and I'm pushing through. Some days it's a little bit like, you know, wish I could be in the classroom with other people, especially considering our profession of teaching. Um, yeah, so I'm mostly doing pretty well. Got, I have my ups and downs as everybody I think does right now, but I'm hanging in there. Awesome. Do you have a, a ritual that you have implemented that's helping you with your daily activities? You know, I, I don't know if I have a ritual per se, but I have, I have taken up running <laughs> more because okay. I feel like it's something that I, you know, it gives me kind of a goal for myself now that I'm not really in classes per se um, at school. So I don't know if I would call it a ritual, but it's a new thing for me. Awesome. Kind of fun. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a healthy ritual. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know uh, many friends, the rituals is included in a larger intake of alcohol. So uh, yeah, you know, you're, doing, you're doing a great job. <laughs> for uh, now. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I know with breakout, we, we transitioned pretty quickly into our online classes. And I know with, with your work at Body Works and your own practice with Pilates, you've been on it really quickly getting your Zoom classes going. So how has that been? How has it been an easy transition? What has been the, the, um, the roadblocks and the successes of going online? Um, you know, I think 
at first we we did get on it really quickly and with you did with breakout too i think there was like a a moment of where everybody was just in shock for a second like what what do we do this is like what we've been doing our whole lives it's in person um so of course you know as everybody started to transition online it became a thing that was doable for now um i think it is it, we're doing it right we're we're making it happen right now i think you know, there's a there there are things that are missing not being in person, um, which would be I think really the biggest challenge is just missing the in person interactions. Obviously, if you're teaching a class, you feed off of your students, and so when you don't have I, Zoom, you can kind of see people, but it's it's very different than having like the actual in person interaction. So I think if there's something that it has been challenging that would be the biggest thing. Um, but I do think a lot of studios adapted really well. I was really impressed with everywhere that I work. Um, I think everyone just was like, this is what we have to deal with right now and we're just gonna do it. And so yeah. I was really impressed with with most places that I work just to have, just you know, adjusting last second to having to do it. Um, so I think it's been, I think a lot of um, businesses and in particular dance fitness studios have been pretty resilient through this mm -hmm. whole situation, which I've appreciated greatly because I can keep working, mm -hmm. um, which has been great for me. Um, yeah. So while there are, there are definitely challenges, you know, online internet issues, <laughs> all <laughs> of that, I think we've all had some fun um, <laughs> issues come up during our online teaching. Yes, we have. But, yeah, we could probably write a book after this, but um, but yeah, I've, I've been really impressed with how teachers have transitioned pretty quickly. That's great. Yeah. How are you feeling about going back? I know that's been things for me. It's been a struggle being an owner because I obviously financially and uh, just wanting to be back with people. It's it's pushing me to open, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, I'm someone that I have a uh, underlying immunity issue mm -hmm. that I have to deal with. So I'm concerned about my personal health, but just, you know, small lobby, two small bathrooms, one room, you know, it, it, I just, am so scared to reopen and I go, I'm listening to people and, and trying to get the best advice I can, but boy, it's a tough decision. So oh, yeah. are you, are you, you know, especially for, I'm not sure if you do privates, but like, how do you, gauged for yourself like when you're going to be comfortable to go back into the studio that's a good question um i feel like i go back and forth a little bit on that too i generally don't think i feel super comfortable going into crowded spaces mm -hmm. and i say that i mean i i have had to fly in the last couple of weeks so that's been like actually a pretty big fear that i had to overcome for a day um, because, um, my husband came back from being deployed. So I flew to North Carolina to be with him, um, while he has to quarantine. Um, so, you know, I, I have dealt with being around people, but it was, it was a very anxiety provoking experience. I imagine. So yeah. yeah, um, it was not something I would have chosen to have to deal with. Um, so as far as, yeah, it, it makes me a little nervous still to be around people. Um, I think if people are taking their own precautions, then it makes me feel a little bit better that we're all kind of in the same boat. Right. Um, you know, I know some of uh, the place, my studios are coming back with privates, but only if the client is comfortable with it and only if the right. teacher is comfortable with it, we have, um, we're wearing masks, we're staying separate. Um, the studio is spacing everything out. And this is for Pilates privates, not dance. Right. Um, but I will say that most of my clients are still wanting to continue with our online um, yeah. sessions because I don't think, I think a lot of people are just not ready for it, whether it's for themselves um, or it's people that they're living with who have to deal with immunocompromise. Uh, you know, immune system issues and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people kind of are, are not quite ready. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I think I, I could handle going into a 
a situation where it was like me and one other person right. taking precautions, but right. we were looking at the floor plan of the studio and thinking, okay, how does six feet apart thing work? And what's interesting is, yeah, six feet from my front to your front is one thing, but then you have to think yeah. it's six feet in all directions right <laughs> and that's yeah. when it becomes yeah. really tough because you're like well that means i have to be 12 feet from that person and and all of a sudden when you thought you could have 15 people in a cardio class you're like actually no you can have four <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh man know, like miles between yeah and, and that would yeah. be tough because we want to be fair also to our clients I mean, we have clients that still have class cards that are you know out there and, and people right. pur purchase things and to start like a lottery system for dance cardio would be like, <laughs> but even our you know yeah even, even ballet basics you, you wouldn't be able to do you know, the 15 people in class yeah so uh, and i think that, about the bar too yeah. having you know holding on to the bar and things like that i mean right. it, yeah it would it would be very different yes and it's, it's really different because people say well gyms are opening like well in a gym, usually gyms are a lot larger, mm -hmm. so you can sort of kind of navigate your pathways, and it's not individual machines. We're all in the same space. We're breathing. We're sweating. Yeah. You know, when, they say the, when they say the word droplets, I kind of like cringe. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that cardio, dance cardio is all about droplets. Yeah. <laughs> as disgusting as that sounds, I mean, it really is. Just right. Breathing. And I don't want anyone you know, hyperventilating, wearing a mask. <laughs> I know. And that's the other thing. It's so, it's so hard to work out in a mask. I mean, it's hard enough just to go out in a mask. You, you feel it, right? It's, it's not something for me that I feel causes me great, um, any issues, but you feel like when you walk up a flight of stairs in a mask that you're breathing a little harder. So I, I couldn't really imagine doing a whole cardio class in a mask. I think that would be oh, a very big a challenge. Mask. Yeah. <laughs> Either, you, either yeah either you're gonna get covid or you're gonna pass out because yeah. you're breathing your own air for 45 right uh, yeah it's not um, good do you find that during all this madness and you know you you mentioned the heightened anxiety when you're flying and, and stress levels up do you find comfort when you teach or when you're able to to be physical with movement do you find a release in that i know for me um not all the time, because sometimes when I'm doing dance cardio by myself with the camera, I'm like, this is so silly. I can't, you know, scan yeah. it. Um, but I, I have felt on occasion a, um, a way to get out of it. Yeah. Do you feel that? I do. I, I, I feel similar to you. Um, I think not all the time. Sometimes it's just you're giving a class to what feels like no one. Um, but yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of instances when it does give me like a little vacation from thinking about coronavirus and all of the issues that we're all facing. And especially at first I found that a lot because I think my personal anxiety level was pretty high in the beginning month. Um, and so I, I really appreciated that I could go on and teach um, during that time because it did take my mind off of it for at least sometime, and it's it still does most of the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I yeah. I feel like it's a superpower we have in general. You know, mm -hmm. without the pandemic, that we can tap into that, and I think that's a big part of how breakout has been able to sustain itself over the years. Is that people really do find their stress relief and their their uh, you know, for some of them, it's sort of like their meditation, even though yeah. we're screaming and running and yelling and they can find, you know, quiet in that and, and the fact yeah. that we're not thinking about the noise. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think, I, I mean, dance and movement has always been, at least for me, and I know for a lot of people, just like you said, like a, a time where it, it is meditative because you're focusing on one thing that's, that it isn't necessarily all of the stressors in your life. And it's, it really does kind of bring you down from that um, level of if you do feel anxiety or stress, I think it's always been that for me yeah. in whatever I'm going through personal personally. So, so yeah, yeah. It, it's such a valuable thing anyway. I mean, pre coronavirus, but especially I think now it's been really 
um, great for people to have that still. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think it's like part of our tool belt that we have, you know, like, like I said, some people, some people might grab an extra glass of wine, which is not, no judgment. That's fabulous yeah. for you. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't drink wine. So, um, but yeah, yeah, having that extra little thing in our tool belt that we can go to when we're, you know, our shoulders start creeping up by our mm-hmm. ears. And, and, mm-hmm. uh, so I think as a final like wrap up question, what does the future look like for you and your profession and what you're doing again, not only with breakout and, because we're going to keep doing online regardless of reopening. We, you mm-hmm. know, we want to keep this in our in our business. But um, what does the future look like for you if, if we do need to kind of stay the course for the next few weeks, possibly months, and then heaven forbid it comes back in the fall? You know, is it going to be kind of this movement forward or changing things up, trying new things? Um, I think I think we've done a pretty good job of providing our services in a way that is safe for people to continue um, enjoying dance classes, movement classes. Um, So I see it going forward similarly to how it's been. I think it's been an interesting time for the dance and movement world because while a lot of people were starting to go online, I think most people were not. And so it's really interesting that now your survival is going online. So if we weren't technologically savvy before, not talking to you, Todd, you were always technologically savvy, but (laughs) people like me, it's like we had to become that. Um, So there was there, yeah, there's definitely been this big transformation in, and even dance companies, how they're presenting work. It's very interesting that they're still presenting work. It's some of them it's different i mean it's all you know individual dancers and they've created um you know a video production so it's not like you're going to a theater but it's it's been an interesting transition and i think even at some point hopefully when we get back to what we know as normal i think there's going to be a lot more of that which is not a bad thing i mean it's it's kind of keeping up with the times and it's forced everybody to get to that level so um I think we're going to see a lot more of that, but I think in the, in the near future, yeah, I can see um, us all continuing to offer our services online and hopefully help people to keep moving, even if, you know, it's, it's harder than it used to be. Well, I think that's a fabulous, fabulous note to end on. And I would, would, would say that um, at Breakout, we adore you. And we, we thank you so much for all your love that you give the students. And I recognize it's not easy to teach online because I'm there with you doing it. And it's, it's an yes. odd place to be. Um, and I'm so happy that your, your hubby is back and with you. That's fabulous. Um, Hopefully he can stay with you for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. And uh, just take care of yourself. And thank you for chatting with me. Thanks, Todd. And uh, thanks for keeping Breakout going and keeping everything, you know, rolling still through all of this. We all appreciate you. It's my pleasure. Well, have a great day and we'll chat soon again. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Breakout Studios Life Move podcast. I am so honored to have a great friend of mine today to talk about being an artist, being a teacher, being someone that is used to a certain flow and it's been, sh- it's been all shaken up by this COVID-19 situation. I am excited to get his perspective on the world we're living in. And it's, again, my honor to chat with Russell Warfield. Hi, Russell. Hello, Todd. How are you? I'm great. Hello, everybody. Hey. How's everything in, in New York City? Is it getting is better for you all? Or I know it's pretty crazy. Things are actually better here. Um, people are abiding by, mo- by the most part, what we're supposed to do. New York is a resilient city. And unfortunately, we've been through some things in the past. And so when it comes to coming together and supporting one another, despite what anyone will say, New York's got your back and we have each other's back. Fantastic. That's, that's great to hear. I know when we first started chatting when we were organizing our Destination Dance at Home program. I mean, you all were in the thick of it and I could I could just hear it in your voice. It was a crazy time. Uh, so I'm really glad to hear that it's getting better. So long road for you all and for everyone, but it's, it's great that it's getting better. Um, we usually start these little chats with a 
like a little bio introduction, but because yours is so insane and the fact that you've been in so many amazing shows, Dance Theater of Harlem, your work with gymnasts, I'm just saying a few things, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll post your bio that we have on Destination Dance on the, the, the video link because that would just take up too much time <laughs> because you're so incredible. Um, so I guess my first question is, you know, beyond the dance component, how are you doing right now? How are you feeling? Where are you at right now? I just want to check in. Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, my journey here through all of this thing in the beginning, it was, okay, this is what we have to do. And I had no problem, you know, the solidarity being, being here with myself. Um, I thought I have time to do what I need to do. And I started taking care of things and doing projects. And then it got to the point where I thought, I kind of miss human contact and I miss going out. And, and then I didn't sort of want to rebel, but I just sort of started missing people and missing interactions. And that's when I started talking to people more often, which I think is really important, calling friends. Because we would call every once in a while, but we started calling more regularly and having longer chats and checking in with family. And then I accepted it. And then I lost my mind. But right now, I'm back to the point where I'm finding ways to make this as pleasurable as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have any type of specific routine that you follow day to day? where, you know, do you do anything ritualistic in the morning? I know you're a coffee drinker, so you start your day probably with coffee and a little um, Wendy Williams, perhaps. But uh, what what's your ritual to get through this? Do you have one? Well, the thing is, I, I've spoken with friends of mine, and they sort of lost track of days and lost track of their routine. But for me, I tried to make it a point to stick to, to have some kind of regularity in my life. And that involves getting up at around the same time, and doing the things that I normally would do at those same times, minus going out. Like I still try to wake up around the same time, go to bed at the same time, um, have my coffee and my breakfast and things at the same time. Just try to keep some kind of regular routine in this irregular routine time that we're in. And I find that that helps me. And what also helps me, which may, and it has nothing to do with vanity, is sticking to like showering, taking a bath, putting some clothes on, even though I have nowhere to go, but just actually getting ready. Because I hear people say they go from their depths, which I suppose is a good thing. But I think just like, even if you just dress, not dress up, but if you put some things on, you know, wear some comfortable clothes, and then you, at night, whatever you sleep in, you, there's just some kind of uniformity in this crazy time, I think really helps. So you have a schedule, even though life, we're at the sort of the mercy of the elements and the way things are right now. Yeah, I went over to my parents' house the other night for just a little dinner with them. And, you know, I put some jeans on and a button up shirt and put some cologne on. And I came in the house and they're like, whoa, buddy, you're really snazzy. I was like, well, it's, like you said, it's nice to feel you know, as if I was going going out or 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 taking some time for myself. You know, that's important generally, you know, in life. But really now when you're so drawn to comfort and drawn to the couch and drawn to um, Netflix and chill type moments, that it is good to indulge a bit. Um, so kind of moving into... Uh, more of a, a chat about how COVID is affecting, you know, those of us, you know, we both were involved with an, a, an event at Maryball that was canceled, um, you know, and it was a, a work thing for us. It was something we really enjoy, but also, you know, it is part of our yearly uh, budget that we create for ourselves and, and what we do. Um, I know you've also been affected with camps being canceled and other things. So how's that come about for you? Well, um, I know about, you know, about the, the different stages of denial and things like that. Well, I'm, I've sort of accepted that my work for the whole summer is basically gone. Um, but those are things like there's something I always think about the serenity prayer, which paraphrasing basically is, you know, con control the things that you have control of and accept the things that you don't and having the wisdom to know the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And so since this whole situation, you have to take it day by day, 
rather than dwelling on what I don't have, I try to think about things that I do have in my life because I think gratitude has been something that has kept me sane mm -hmm. and also um, just, just not thinking about what I'm going to miss out on. And I, cause, cause it's not, it does for me at some point, you know, when the initial news came that certain events were canceled or certain things were canceled, it was kind of hard, but then I thought, so what are you going to do in place of it? Whether that be just something for me or just something at that time or something to replace it, but just that you keep going and you don't stop your life, even though things that hadn't happened yet, because it's kind of strange to sort of um, lament or be sad about something that could have been or isn't going to happen. Because while you're thinking about something that is in the future, that's no longer going to happen, you're missing out on what's happening right now, this moment. So for me, I've been cooking a lot more and um, <laughs> finding things around my apartment that I didn't even know I had, cleaning out closets and doing stuff. So the thing is, it's just taking advantage of right now and not thinking about things that you don't have and then planning creative things, you know, in order to get by. Yeah. Yeah, you and I have talked about that a lot. Like you, the things that are out of our control, why expand energy to be upset about it? And I mean, obviously, there are things to be upset about and things to be emotional about. And those of us who are, um, you know, we we had our happy hour event with our destination dance, and to hear all those stories and to see how people just in our small twelve person chat were affected in so many different ways. I. I still, I've been thinking about that every day since. Um, it's incredible, but it is important to live in the moment and, and to dance fully when you are dancing and try to block out everything else. Um, so moving forward, um, I know I, I've asked you to participate possibly in breakout and some teaching down the road and whatnot, but do you have anything coming up teaching wise online? Or are you using any of this new technology to connect with students or with your gymnastics um, clients. Sidebar, uh, Russell has choreographed for gold medalists. So we're not talking like, you know, little gymnastics things, the big, big time. <laughs> well, I've done the little ones too, and the big yeah. ones. Yeah. The whole yeah. game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been interesting. Um, I'm going to start working with some local clubs, and I did something, it's called an online gym school, which was. Um, a friend of mine, Sam Pezik, she was in the, let me get the 2012, 2012, 2012 Olympics. And I've known her since she was, I don't know, nine or so and done routines with her and worked with her. And she and some friends of hers started an online gym school. It was a, it's, it's, it's ending this week. And it was a program to help kids who are stuck at home, you know, to give them something to do that's related to gymnastics. And she opened it up all over the world and there were seven countries that participated and part of the money goes back to their gym school when you sign up. So I was, I was doing that and that sort of gave me that connection that I was missing of working with the little kids because like yourself, even though we enjoy our alone time with ourselves, but we're such giving people that that's such a strong part of us that I really miss being able to share and give and teach. So that I've been doing, and then possibly, hopefully, I will maybe maybe teaching a class for you, which I'm really seriously thinking about doing. So I, that should I be had to first. say that to put the put my pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I would I would really love that. Um, well, we're working out things, and uh, and we're excited for sure. So being so being a Broadway dancer, um, and the shows being closed and such a loss to New York City, but to the world in the arts. Um, do you do you feel that's going to come back anytime soon? Obviously, it's it's all about you know if they can get the cure figured out and if that's going to happen and uh, when and but I mean there is really no timeline, right, of what's happening with no. the productions. The thing that's really sad about it is, you know, I, I have a, I have neighbors, quite a few of my, like my friends who are in the business as well, live in the building that I live in. And if you can imagine, 
you know, a lot of them are, they, they are in hit shows. And with the business, as most of you probably know, or at least are familiar with, it's kind of a feast or a famine. And when you're in a show like The Lion King or Hamilton, or like there were these, these younger kids that I had met at the gym who were in West Side Story. A lot of them, it was their Broadway debut. And the show was only open maybe like 10 days or so. And so you get your first Broadway show and you think, wow, this one's a hit, great reviews. I'm going to get my own apartment. You know, I'm finally, I can quit my waiting job. And you just think life is waits before you. Because I remember that feeling the first time I got my first production contract. And to know that 10 days into it, it just stopped. It just stopped and you don't know when it's going to come back. And there's a lot of logistics that go with it. Like, for instance, I know there are some shows, I know of one show that while they're on their hiatus, the producers let them know we're not coming back. I mean, it was frozen. So mm -hmm. here you think, oh, I'm going to pause. I'm going to come back. I'm going to have my job. And while you're away, you didn't get to say goodbye. You didn't, you know, it's a whole process. I've been in shows that have closed and I've been, you know, in a show where I've left the show. And there's a whole, I don't want to say grieving, but there's a whole process of more so when the show is closing, where, you know, there's a finality to it, you know, that, okay, so we have, you know, six weeks or eight weeks. So then you start stacking those checks away, or you really start watching your things because you know, this is getting ready to end. While if you're leaving a show, usually you're leaving a show, I was fortunate to be going to another show but you know that you're going to leave that show's family, that group of people, so you get to say your goodbyes. And it's a whole ritual that you, uh, you have. And in this case, you, you, not only did you not get to say goodbye to people or have that ritual, it just stopped. And, and for me, even though I was not in a show at this present time, but having friends who are in shows, it's just unimaginable. And also the whole process of coming back, um, you know, you're out of a show for two months or so, or I don't know, it's going on three months now, you're going to have to have rehearsal time. And then there's so many factors involved. They want to say that they only want the theaters to be 40% filled. And, you know, it's hard to keep a show running with 40% capacity. Right. And singing is one of the most easily spread, spreadable ways that they've thought of you know, and right. there's also choreography where you have partnering, where you touch each other, and then there's stage kissing and there's stage intimacy and all these factors that I guess, yeah, I have a friend who works at Disney and he's in charge of eight shows and he was thinking, is he going to have to restage shows? Right. Right. I mean, you know, imagine Sleeping Beauty, you don't kiss her, you like bump her elbow and wake her up. I don't know. <laughs> Snow White, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> well, that's part of the magic of theater is the intimacy of it and the, the being close and the, the storytelling. And um, so a question that I, I, so this is my second um, interview of the day or conversation of the day. Previous conversation was one of my ballet teachers. I have a faculty. She also does Pilates um, and different things in Tucson. And I asked her, you know, because most of the people that watch these videos are participating in our classes are at home and they're trying to de-stress and they're trying to use movement in a way, you know, whether it's escapism or, or healing. So I guess the question I want to ask you, Russell, is how do you use movement in your life specifically right now at this madness as therapy as 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 a medicine as uh, a way to you know you know when I was watching you teach at that station dance and you were doing your um, I think it was one of the Latin classes or something and I could just I I see productions and I see a, a, a club in Savannah or something you know I see all kinds of things but how do you use movement to help you help your your soul well for me I know you're <laughs> All right on cue. For me, I, it's the whole escapism. And that's the, that's the beauty of theater. And that's the beauty of um, being able to express yourself. Like in that Latin class, we were, we were still who we were, but we were all dancing and we were, we were in a Latin club. Like you said, we had gone off 
to, you know, wherever you want to in your mind. And for that hour, we were somewhere else. Everything was fine. And that's the fun, wonderful thing about having creative minds and be able to do what you do. And when you're dancing, there not that there isn't any COVID existing, but when you're dancing, you're so focused on what you're doing or when you're moving and just enjoying yourself, nothing else matters at that moment except for the joy or nothing should matter except for the joy of what you're doing and having and 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 we keep going back to being in the moment. Um, one of my gymnasts, I mean, I would drop her name because she was a world on a world championship team. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of her, but her name is Shayla Worley. And I don't, Shayla will probably never hear this, but Shayla was the most incredible performer, one of the most incredible performers that I've ever worked with. I never had to tell her, you know, do it, do it well. She always performed every time, practice, competitions. And one time I asked her, I said, Shayla, what do you do? Why do you, you know, I can't get other people to do what you do in a competition, but you do it every time. And she said, because I'll never get that routine again. And I was like, what? She said, I'll do another routine, but I'll never get that routine again. Mm. And you never know when it's going to be your last one. So I yeah. just do it. I just enjoy it because I'll never get that one again. So she, leave, she leaves it out there. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was really wise beyond her. You know, she was in college just to say that. And it was just, it was just the, the pure joy of being able to do what you do because fast forward in a lot of people's lives, you know, when you're, you know, 30, 40 years from now, when you're not able to move like you do now, you will hopefully still be able to move. You won't have any regrets because you did it when you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had an instructor growing up that always said, leave it on the floor, leave it on the floor. And um, I kind of live, I think, I think, I think I live my life that way. I, I hope I do. I kind of um, push myself to be, like you said at the beginning, present. And I think if you are present and you're fully experiencing the things around you, if you do begin to dance, that is expansive and amazing and you can escape and you can do stress and it, it leads to um, some positive uh, change. Um, well, I have to start getting ready for my dance cardio class that I have today. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, I've done that too many times in my life. Um, it's but okay. All right. Yeah, it's fun. It could be a lot worse, right? Correct. <laughs> it could be like... Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, but I want to thank you so much, Russell, for chatting with me. And I adore you. And you're such a good friend. And you've always been so sweet to come to Tucson and, and visit and teach at Breakout and be a part of our family. So I await your next trip here. It might be Maribel or it might be just to visit and enjoy the sun and, and just uh, catch up. Um, but any, any final thoughts you have on just, again, being an artist? Just, and, um the thing is, I would just say, this is something like I never want to tell someone what to do because what works for you may not, what works for me what may not work for you. But the thing is that no matter what, always try to find something to be grateful for. And I think that has helped me, you know, because it can always be worse. It can always be better. And even though these times may seem stressful, if you're fortunate enough that this is the, the, um, least fortunate time in your life, because I like to choose my words carefully. I don't want to say worse because that's all relative. But if these are the least fortunate times of your life, then I think you're pretty lucky. Then you'll learn how strong you are. And if you realize that, I know for me, I've had times that were more stressful and worse than right now. And I got through those and I'll get through this. You know, and that's that's the thing. And I'm out and everyone I start to almost feel a little bit like Never so much what was me, but oh, and that comes from sometimes listening to outside sources. Stay away from craziness. If you hear, like, turn the news off every once in a while. I watch Cartoon Network. I watch a funny movie. <laughs> I watch yes. some old shows, just something. But give yourself, um, you know, give yourself time to just say it's okay for you. Like, like uh, you know, instead of criticizing yourself or, you know, oh, I didn't do this today. I didn't do that today. But what did you do today? Right. You know, you got up, you right. made your coffee, you made, you did something. There are some people who are in ICU units with 
you know, ventilators down their throat who would switch with you if they could. Right. So, you know, always count your blessings. And I think that's, that has helped me through numerous occasions. Just always count your blessings because if, you know, it's, there's always something to be grateful for. Just the fact that you woke up and you're breathing is two things to be grateful for. Because there are some people who didn't do that today. Mm-hmm. And they're probably like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you forget what to be grateful for, take a deep breath. That's thank all you, you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Love you. Take care. Um, and, and we'll be in touch about the class. Yes. We'll, we'll work something out. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. All right, take care. I love you. Bye. Bye.